Hey, Way family. Welcome to another Growth Devotional. This is a beautiful week to be alive and to know Jesus. And uh, just want to say hey to everybody. Good morning. Um, hope you guys are doing incredible. Our 30-day growth challenge, I know it's been a couple weeks, but man, it was such an incredible time, and I think about it. I pray that you guys are really getting the most out of this growth book. It's an incredible resource Pastor Marco has given all of us. And uh, we're going to be in Ephesians 3 today. We're going to have some more teachers coming. Uh, next week's going to be Christian and so on and so forth. And we just love giving you the Word of God. We love to be a part of your life as teachers. And thank you for opening a door for our influence into your life. Thank you for listening to what we have to say because we're just giving you the Word of God. It heals you. It can give you breakthrough in your family. We're, we're a strength with you. We're a support with you walking alongside to say all the promises that God has given in your life. We want them to be fulfilled in your life. So Ephesians chapter 3, let's invite the Holy Spirit. Remember once again, who's the teacher of the Word. We never want to open up His book without the teacher in the classroom. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and help us for what we're about to read. Highlight to us what you want us to hear. We love you and thank you ahead of time that we're going to get your words. Speak to us through the living voice. Amen. So let's go ahead and start reading. I'm only going to, like I said, highlight a few things in the chapter. There's a lot in here, but just a couple things because we want you guys to get revelation for yourself as you're talking uh, about it with your groups and in even your families. Hopefully you guys are using the growth book as well. If you have kids, to be getting around the table, to be reading this. You can be doing Bible studies with your family. It's so powerful. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. Now remember, every time that we begin a new chapter, you should always go to the previous chapter. Just the last few verses, because remember, the Bible was not written in verses and chapter. So you want to just get the thought. This is just a continuing thought. So you want to know exactly where you're at on the last portion. So let's read from Ephesians 2, verse 19. Consequently, you know, longer are foreigners or aliens. Now remember, he's been talking about who we are now through the blood of Jesus Christ because we've been found in Christ. But now you're fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Come on now. Hallelujah. Citizens, guys. Citizens. Not members of a church. Citizens of a kingdom. Amen. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. All right. Verse 1, chapter 3. For this reason, now we know what reason it is. The prisoner, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, are here for the sake of you Gentiles. He calls himself a prisoner of Christ. Another version calls himself a love slave of Jesus Christ. There's a lot we could go on in just this statement alone. But just understand, Jesus has a different kind of prisoner, a different kind of servant, a different kind of love slave. He has slaves of love, mercy, and goodness. When you bind yourself to Christ, the word is bondservant, which is the word for prisoner. It's bondservant. It's from the Old Testament. There was a period of time where slaves were given over to owners. This is like Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers, these kind of, you know, in the Old Testament. And they would be owned for a period of time to work for their master. God does specifically address masters to treat their slaves well and to, you know, to honor them and to give them what their pay is required and all those things to, to honor that. But at the end of the time, when the slave was done with his time, he had the opportunity to do something. And not every slave did this. But he would walk up to a doorway. He would put his ear on the door. And he would ask the master to mark him with the master's mark. And it would be in the earlobe. He said, I want you to mark me with your mark. And this means that I am now choosing. I'm not, I don't have to be here because of any contract anymore or anything else. Or my time is done. But I am choosing to be your servant in this house for this family for the rest of my life. It was a choice on their behalf. He said, I don't want to go anywhere else. You've been a great master. I wouldn't want to serve another house. Think about the beautiful picture that is. Paul is saying, I am a bond slave. I am someone who has marked myself, not with, just with Jesus and his mark, but I'm doing this because I would rather not serve anybody but you Gentiles. I love you guys. I've given my life to give you the message. And I love this. 
I would go nowhere else because my master is Jesus and he's the greatest master I could ever have. That's a beautiful picture, guys. Verse two, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations and has been now revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Every prophecy they ever got, guess who gave it to them? The Holy Ghost. It was revealed. The word prophesy actually means to bubble up. To bubble up. So you gotta understand the Holy Spirit's inside. He comes upon these prophets at the moment they need the prophecy. Because remember, the Holy Spirit was not inside anybody until he did not come to reside with us until Acts chapter two. But he came upon people in the Old Testament for small seasons of time. So he'd come upon them and it said it would bubble up. So inside of them, in the moment they needed to speak, they would open their mouth in faith and out of them would bubble up the word that would come through from the Spirit of God. It was always the Holy Ghost who brought it and it's still the Holy Ghost who brought it. He's who gives you insight. He's who gives you wisdom. Verse six, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are now heirs with Israel and members of one body. All right, verse seven, let's get to this. This is amazing. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Okay, so grace and power. That's another place. Second Corinthians 9 is another example. Well, grace and power are made exactly the same. They are one and the same. Although I am less than the least of God's people. Whoa. This grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. All right, hold on just a second. You got to understand what Paul's just saying here. This is a massive statement. This is the man who has written two thirds of the New Testament. Okay. This man, many of these books that he wrote, Paul, was in chains while he's writing them. He's got a candle. Sometimes in prison while he's writing these things, okay? And he's getting such revelation from God. We're talking revelations that are amazing. This man was single, for instance. Let's think about the revelation of marriage. Most of our revelations that come from marriage came from a single man. You see how that would fly today. Have you ever seen single people asked to come to a marriage conference and speak on marriage? You wouldn't even think about it. But the majority of our, what we get from marriage of the New Testament is from Paul. The man was single. Okay. So this is incredible though. God is giving this man such incredible uh, mysteries and knowledge. And this man says of himself, I am the least of all God's people. Now, in order to truly understand the journey Paul's gone on, you got to understand this was not the first book Paul has written. Okay. Earlier on, 1 Corinthians was an earlier book. In 56 AD, Paul had written 1 Corinthians, and he said this in 1 Corinthians. He said, I am the least of all the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, 1 Corinthians 15, 9. Now he's writing Ephesians in 60 AD and 61. So this is four to five years later, okay? He's walked with God for the last four to five years, and he writes this. I am the least of all the saints. So four or five years ago, he's the least of the apostles, He goes four or five years later walking with God. Now I'm the least of all Christians. And then in 1 Timothy, which he writes in 62 AD to 64 AD, another couple years, 1 Timothy 1.15, he says, I am Christ Jesus to the world to save for all sinners, which I am the chief of all sinners. I'm the worst of all of them. This is incredible. This is the journey of getting to know God. Are you realizing something's going on here? The more you know God, the more disgusted with your sin you become. The more you know God, the humbler you're supposed to become. Not the more like a celebrity, not the more like you're entitled, not the more of these things. Do you see Paul? He starts with God and he says, I'm the least of these apostles. Years later he says, you know what, man, I'm the least of all Christians. I mean, this just humbles me, guys. This touches me. Then later he says, I'm the worst sinner in the world. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you can understand the depth of what I'm trying to say. When God is in your life, the holiness of God becomes so real in your life. The beauty of God, the more that you know him, the less you feel you know. The more that you know him, the more that his holiness is apparent in your life. The more that you look at yourself and say, Jesus, how have you put up with me for so long? But God, I just want to be more like you. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to look more like that, that beautiful holiness. And the more the things of your life that don't match up to him, the more that you're like, man, God, you got to clean me. 
What I'm trying to tell you all, and we're only going to give one more point because I don't want to go too long, but what I'm trying to tell you all is this. The longer you walk with Jesus, can I ask you a question? Have you become harder or softer in your heart? Have you put up more walls than ever the longer you've been with Christ? Or are you forgiving people easier than you ever have? Are you hungrier for the Word of God today? Because you know how much you need it. You need it and you know you need it more than you've ever needed it. Do you know how much you need God? And are you more dependent on the Lord today than you've ever been? Because if you've been walking with the true Jesus, you become more humble, you become more dependent. Verse 14, I'm going to say this last thing. There's some other points, but let's continue. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name, And he's about to say a promise for us. Now listen, he says, I kneel. I love it how Paul says, I kneel when I pray. It's a humble position. I kneel when I pray. It's not wrong if you don't kneel when you pray. I'm just saying it's a beautiful position. It's humble. I pray and here's the prayer. And you can repeat this prayer and I want you to repeat this prayer. I'm going to say it out loud and I want you at home to say it with me. I want you to repeat this prayer. If you'll get your Bible out, you can say it with me. I pray that... Out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen me with power through his spirit in my inner being so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith. And I pray that I, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high and deep is the love of Jesus And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that I may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask, imagine according to his power that is at work within us. That's so good. To him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. Listen, y'all, it's not according to your power. It's according to his power that he's able to go exceedingly above and beyond all you've ever asked or thought. And that power is at work within you. His name is the Holy Spirit. And he's trying to work the power of grace in your life. I pray you've been blessed by this today. Receive that power. Receive that goodness. Depend on the Lord. He is a sure foundation and he never shakes. God bless you all. Have an amazing rest of your day and a great week. Amen.